Capillary leak syndrome, or CLS, is a life-threatening condition where the body's blood vessels become excessively leaky, allowing fluid and proteins to escape into surrounding tissues. This can lead to severe swelling, low blood pressure, organ failure, and even shock. In this video, we'll break down what causes CLS, how it affects the body, and the critical steps involved in diagnosing and treating this condition. Whether you're in the medical field or just curious about this syndrome, stay tuned for a clear, easy-to-understand guide to understanding capillary leak syndrome. What is capillary leak syndrome, CLS? Definition. CLS is a condition where fluids and proteins leak from the blood vessels into surrounding tissues. Key consequences. Intravascular hypovolemia. Low blood volume within vessels. Extravascular edema. Swelling in tissues due to fluid accumulation. Hypoperfusion. Reduced blood flow to organs, leading to potential organ dysfunction. Why does CLS occur? Normal fluid exchange. The body maintains balance by controlling fluid movement between blood vessels and tissues. Disturbance in balance. Inflammation or injury can disrupt this balance, causing the vessels to become leaky. Common triggers of CLS. 1. Infections. Sepsis. Body-wide infection causing systemic inflammation. 2. Surgical procedures. Cardiac surgery with bypass can induce inflammatory responses. 3. Allergic reactions. Anaphylaxis. Severe allergic reaction leading to widespread vessel leakage. 4. Injuries. Major burns. Damaged skin and vessels causing fluid shifts. 5. Medications and toxins. Certain chemotherapy drugs, e.g., gemcitabine. Biological agents like interleukins and monoclonal antibodies. Toxins like ricin. There is a special case, idiopathic systemic capillary leak syndrome, Clarkson's disease. Characteristics. Rare and severe episodes of fluid leakage in healthy individuals. Two phases. Leak phase. Sudden drop in blood pressure, dizziness, swelling. Recovery phase. Fluid re-enters vessels, risk of fluid overload, pulmonary edema. This image illustrates the contrast between capillary leak during an inflammatory response and a physiologic state where the vascular barrier remains intact. Physiologic state, in right side of image. Intact vascular barrier. Under normal conditions, the endothelial cells maintain strong connections, interendothelial adhesion, preventing fluid from leaking into tissues. The glycocalyx remains intact, providing a stable barrier between the bloodstream and surrounding tissues. TIE2 signaling is functional, helping to maintain endothelial stability and prevent excessive permeability. Capillary leak, in left side of image. Inflammatory stimulus triggers a cascade that leads to glycocalyx shedding, the protective layer covering the endothelium, inner lining of blood vessels, begins to break down, releasing components like SYNDECAN1 and heparin sulfate into the bloodstream. Extravasation. Fluid and proteins leak from the blood vessels into surrounding tissues due to increased permeability, resulting in swelling and tissue damage. Compromised interendothelial adhesion. The connections between endothelial cells weaken, allowing larger gaps for fluid to escape. ANGIOPOIETIN2. This molecule, depicted as interfering with the TIE2 receptor, plays a crucial role in further weakening the endothelial barrier, increasing the likelihood of fluid leakage. How to diagnose and monitor CLS? 1. Serologic markers. Vascular barrier signaling. ANGIOPOIETIN2. Reflects endothelial dysfunction and increased vascular permeability. Glycocalyx shedding. SYNDECAN1 and heparin sulfate. Biomarkers that indicate the breakdown of the endothelial glycocalyx, a critical protective layer, commonly seen in CLS. 2. Vascular leak index, or VLI. Formula, shown here. Purpose. This index helps to assess the degree of vascular leak by comparing changes in hematocrit levels and fluid balance over time. A higher VLI indicates more severe vascular leakage. 3. Body Composition Analysis Techniques used Bioelectrical impedance analysis Measures body water content, helping to evaluate fluid distribution between intracellular and extracellular compartments. Transpulmonary Thermodilution and PICO 
advanced hemodynamic monitoring to assess cardiac output and fluid balance. 4. Microvascular assessment. Intravital microscopy, used to visualize the microcirculation in real time, providing insights into capillary blood flow, red blood cell dynamics, and endothelial function. This technique helps assess microvascular perfusion, which can be compromised in CLS due to increased permeability and capillary leakage. Clinical presentation are symptoms, hypotension, low blood pressure causing dizziness or fainting, edema, swelling in legs, arms, face, or generalized swelling, shortness of breath due to fluid in lungs, pulmonary edema, reduced urine output, kidneys receive less blood, signs, rapid weight gain from fluid accumulation, tachycardia, fast heart rate as the body tries to compensate, laboratory findings, hemoconcentration, high red blood cell count due to plasma loss, low albumin levels, protein leaks into tissues, treatment considerations, fluid management, rose model, resuscitation, correct hypovolemia, optimization, ensure adequate perfusion, stabilization, prevent fluid overload, evacuation, remove excess fluid, de-resuscitation, fluid stewardship, use fluids judiciously, monitor patient's response closely, endothelial stabilization, preserving the endothelial surface layer, ESL, albumin administration, may help stabilize ESL, has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, clinical trials show mixed results, benefits are not definitive, Potential therapies, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, PDE is, may stabilize endothelial function. PDE4 inhibitors like roflumilast are being studied. Experimental approaches, modulating angiopoietin TI2 axis, targeting ANG2 to prevent TI2 inhibition. Heparonase inhibitors, prevent glycocalyx degradation. Lymphatic support, manual lymphatic drainage, may enhance lymphatic return could help mobilize excess interstitial fluid. So to summarize about CLS, it starts with inflammatory stimulus. Inflammation or infection triggers increased permeability in blood vessels, deranged endothelial interaction, glycocalyx shedding, and loss of intravascular volume. This leads to fluid moving out of blood vessels into surrounding tissues. The syndrome CLS occurs as a result of these inflammatory processes, leading to significant fluid shifts from the blood vessels, intravascular space, to the surrounding tissues, extravascular space. Symptoms are intravascular fluid loss, hypotension, low blood pressure, organ malperfusion, inadequate blood flow to organs, extravascular fluid increase, edema, swelling, anasarca, severe body-wide edema, pulmonary edema, fluid in the lungs, intestinal swelling, weight gain due to fluid retention. Diagnosis is done by clinical signs, intravascular hypovolemia, low blood volume, edema, hypotension, and positive fluid balance. Non-invasive diagnostics, bioelectrical impedance analysis, BIA, for extracellular water. Transpulmonary thermodilution, TPTD, PICO, advanced hemodynamic monitoring. Intravital microscopy for direct visualization, serology, vascular leak index, inflammatory markers, ANGIOPOIETIN2, heparin sulfate, and SYNDECAN1 to assess endothelial damage. Treatment is fluid resuscitation to restore intravascular volume, treating the underlying cause, whether infection or inflammation, supportive measures including de resuscitation to manage excess fluid after stabilization, while carefully balancing fluid levels to avoid overload.